Boy, hasn't this been a long while coming. When did I submit that last video? Three, four months ago? Two months ago. Okay, that's not too bad. Two months isn't too bad. But yeah, I promised to review Frozen and I've kind of not done it. At this rate of production, Anita Sarkeesian might sue me for intellectual theft. But um, Tish? Anyway, I guess I should get started on this. Now, we can't start on Frozen without first starting on Disney. Oh, Disney, you widely loved yet completely despised Studio U. If you're not being praised for making timeless, beautiful classic films that are a visual marvel, then you're being blamed for every fault that girls could ever possibly have. Sure, every girl is different and they may have all seen the Disney films, but I think it's pretty apparent by the fact that they're all different that they weren't directly influenced by them, but heck, it still caused that endless and unfair criticism that has led Disney to be more and more by committee and less by creativity. They're a bit on edge. No film best exemplifies this total lack of imagination and total marketing team at the helm than the most recent Disney creation in the Princess line, which is Frozen. How do I begin with this movie? Boring? Yeah, that sounds about right. This movie is just boring. The plot is a forced mess. The characters are such products and even the animation is really bland. I had actual hope for this movie. The Princess and the Frog had really good characters but a really convoluted plot. And Tangled had a good plot but really boring characters. Frozen had the potential to combine good characters with a good plot. It failed. So hard. <laughs> the movie begins with kids so cute that they gotta be manipulating you because God knows there's no personality. Um, and if I got into the anatomy of these cute little munchkins, we'd be here all day. But these are our two main characters. One has incredible powers. The other is, meh, which one does a movie spend most of the time with? The one that's easier to write for, of course. The meh one. I mean, why focus on the one with superpowers when we have brains? Anyway, the girls run downstairs when, quite fucking suddenly, magic happens. Where does this magic come from? What's its origin? What are the rules or properties? Did anyone at Disney want to put in the effort to explain? Nope! Throughout this entire movie, Elsa's powers are never explained in any way. Its real only rule is cold, and even that's kind of unclear. So, unexplained magic goes awry, injuring stupid little brat, and Elsa is given the excuse for the next five minute musical that doesn't actually make sense when you think about it. Why does Anna not knowing help either her or Elsa? Surely after an incident like that, she wouldn't go snow crazy at 3am. Why didn't they tell her when she was older at least? Did no one think Anna was smart or mature enough to handle it? Based on what we see of her, it's not that much of a stretch. Well, once the parents finish fucking up both their kids, they become a Disney cliche and die. Then again, if all Disney parents are like this, it's hard to see why they wouldn't want to kill them. With that speed run of how our main characters became who they are today, the movie jarringly cuts forward three years later to Elsa's coronation day. Despite the fact that it's a day Elsa will become the ruler of a nation that neither she nor the audience has seen much of, and this is tearing her apart with terror, the movie decides that Anna, our generic, adorable Mary Sue gal, is to me the main focus of the day. How do we know our main character? Why, with a rushed and boring pop song, of course. A song that focused mostly on the boring half of the sisters too, might I add. Well, this could be our chance to learn more about Anna's faults. Maybe her ambitions and drives, or... She sings a non-committed song about meeting a man, doesn't she? Yep. 
Not only does the film denounce this kind of behavior later in the movie. I got engaged, but then she freaked out because I'd only just met him, you know, that day. And she said she wouldn't bless the marriage. Wait, you got engaged to someone you just met that day? Yeah, anyway. Yet still wastes possible character development time with its existence, but also has the gall to be so boring that it sounds identical to the love song Entangled. At last I see the lights. For the first time. See, 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 see that? Or oh, rather hear that? See how similar that is? It's because they're generic. Well, with the wasted time out of the way, we rush into the next thing. Meeting Hans! One of the most painfully obvious bad guys since... Insert any villain here. Anna acts clumsy and awkward in the ways that are never actually awkward but instead charming, adding to her blandness because she's too fucking perfect. Before the movie rather quickly cuts to Elsa's scene. Now, this scene is a tad suspenseful and had an interesting note which is when Elsa turns the scepter and ball thingy and she puts them back on the cushion, they no longer appear to have ice on them. This raises the question, how much of it is in Elsa's head? How much is her own insecurity? How much is her kind of losing her mind when it may not even be that bad and she's making it out to be worse? The movie doesn't do anything with this, do they? Nope! Why think when we can have a five minutes of chit-chat with the sisters, whose relationship is so thin it's transparent, before racing through yet another song? As at this point I should mention that I don't hate musicals. On the contrary, when done well, they can be the best parts of any film. But here the songs have no real charm. They seem like something you'd hear Justin Bieber sing. Just generic poppy songs. There's no culture, no heart. It's music by committee. It's something you'd hear on Saturday morning Disney with the little thing going along, along the lyrics so you can sing along. And after this really boring song, it's then the movie jumps to Anna declaring to her sister her marriage plans for Hans. And shit goes tits up. Now, this scene is so sudden doesn't it, that it doesn't feel like we've earned it. We spend so much time with Anna that Elsa's breaking point seems bizarrely weak. I mean... She's queen for less than four hours and can't handle an altercation with her autistic sister. How does she expect to govern an entire country? If we spent more time with her during the party, maybe see her struggle with the other governing bodies, this would make sense, but we don't see it, so it just seems rushed. Like the movie is sprinting to a single point instead of taking its time to tell the full story. Also, also... Why does Anna give a shit about what Elsa thinks of her love life? The last time they spent time together, she was like, fucking five! And Elsa didn't even come to their parents' funeral. Any normal person would no longer defer to their sister if they were that estranged. It brings me to a major problem with the movie. Anna! She's so unlikably stupid. It gets to the point that one does begin to wonder if she is genuinely autistic. Nowhere in this movie is her be behaviour justified or even considered plausible. Her decision to marry Hans makes no sense within the parameters of the film. No other character thinks this way, so why does Anna? You could say it's because she spent all her time in the castle, but that raises more issues, like why was she locked in? So please, please, I can't live like this anymore. Then leave. Why didn't she ever go out? What was stopping her? Anna's behavior has no excuse and makes no sense. It's like Disney is trying to apologize for previous princess films. An apology that isn't needed, isn't wanted, and fucks up a huge portion of this film. They devote so much time to this that it actually hurts Anna's character and Disney's portrayal of princesses more than it helps. It's when... It's then that Anna does something else incredibly retarded by making random villain person she just met in charge of town we don't care about. 
I leave, Printan's in charge. Who was running shit in the years prior to Elsa's ascension? No time to think about that though, because now it's time we go to the most overhyped thing to ever exist. Peter Molyneux couldn't overhype as much as this next scene did. The Let It Go song. Now, this song is not bad by any means, but it suffers from what all the other songs suffer from. It's completely generic. Again, this sounds like a fucking Katy Perry song. I'm no a music expert, but Elsa's progression in this song doesn't even really make sense. She's screaming about freedom and being in control and harnessing her powers and forgetting her boundaries. Yet, with this new found power, freedom and courage, what does she do? Hides like a fucking coward. I cannot see how this is a good lesson. She runs away from her problems. She never actually solves the feelings of fear because they come back instantly, rather, in the next scene we see her. So it makes the entire fucking song pointless. Songs in musicals are meant to progress the plot and or show how the character is feeling. But, the char- but if the character reverts back to exactly how she was before the song... It has failed. Its only progression was a fucking wardrobe change. The movie skips back to our queen of spazzes, Anna, as we then meet the actual love interest of the movie. Yes, no matter how progressive... Fine. You can't marry a man you just met. (coughs) Bullshit. (coughs) Disney tells you they are by saying, don't marry someone you just met. A common problem in today's society, I'm sure. They then default to what they've always fucking done. Fall in love after less than four days. Now, in classic Disney fairy tales, this is actually totally fine. Films like Snow White and Sleepy Beauty engulf themselves in the fantasy, so the instant love thing isn't strange. In this movie, it doesn't have that excuse. Away, and I grabbed her glove. Hang on. You mean to tell me you got engaged to someone you just met that day? Yes, pay attention. The movie is literally hitting you with one hand, yet encouraging you with the other. It worked, however, because I have heard no criticism of the three-day romance flung at this film like past Disney films. Disney, you're a clever girl. Now... People asking why I haven't actually talked about Kristoff yet, I'm sure. Because there's nothing to say about him. He's just a guy. He is a dude who was raised by fucking rock trolls, is best friends with a reindeer and spent most of his life in the wilderness, yet is as bland as Anna. What does a guy like? Well, he likes his sled and ice. (laughs) But I just paid it off. Oh, come on. It's a palace made of ice. Ice is my life! Whoa! What are his flaws? Like Anna, his only flaw as a character is that he's really boring. Any flaws are as a result of poor writing or Disney using the character as puppets in a ploy to try and seem totally against the grain while being so in the grain they're basically Sandman. A pointless action chase scene later, which deprives the film of time to develop the character's f- Christopher! It's Kristoff! We meet the only halfway decent thing in this movie. Olaf the Snowman. Is he brilliantly written? Not really. He's just a damn sight better than everyone else. Having a thimble of charm could make you the leader of the world compared to everyone else in this movie. A pointless song and comedy bits later, we arrive at Elsa's next hastily rushed scene. Anna walks in and things actually start to go well. It begins to look like the movie is having a nice, slow, calm moment. Our two leads finally talking and trying to understand each other. It starts to do that, but this is obviously a movie for toddlers. So our comedy relief runs in and fucks it scene up. Elsa has a Vietnam flashback to the one and only time shit ever went wrong. When she and Anna were kids playing and despite her power ballad, being an adult now and controlling her powers enough to make a stupid dress, she still can't let it fucking go. 
So we repeat the same songs as we struggle to hear each char character as they literally sing, scream over each other. Just for the first time in forever, I'm such a fool, I can't be free. No escape from the storm inside of me. I can't control the curse. And learn nothing. A contrivance of ice beam happens to help the movie run through the next pointless scene.